What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. In this video, I wanna give you a complete overview of the self-improvement goals that I've set for myself and the actions and tactics I have in place to reach these. As well as documenting my journey, I really hope that this video can inspire you to think about different types of goals you could be setting yourself and maybe even provide a bit of insight into how you could reach these. I'd absolutely love to hear from you, so leave any comments below. And with that being said, let's get into it. So I got into self-improvement about five or six months ago. And after taking some time to sit down and plan out my life and where I want to take it, I decided to focus in on four key areas. My body, my mind, my money, and my knowledge. So let's start with an important one, my body. I'm sure you've seen lots of stuff online about how sorting out your body should be the first step. And then once that's done, everything else falls into place. It teaches you delayed gratification and thinking long-term rather than short-term, which is such an important skill in self-improvement. And the more I'm doing this, the more I'm realizing this is completely true. So my goal for my body is very simple. 10 to 12% body fat with golden ratio proportions. Now you'll notice I said simple and not easy. This is gonna take a lot of work. Now, I stumbled across the golden ratio when I was learning about aesthetic physiques. And if you're not sure what the golden ratio is, basically it's the number 1.618. It is a number that occurs throughout nature and it's something that humans perceive as attractive. For example, if you study beautiful faces, you'll often find the golden ratio in there. Now, for a man, the golden ratio is present when you look at the proportion between different muscle groups. For example, the most attractive body shape for a man is when the shoulders are 1.618 times wider than the waist. When I heard about this, I did some more research and I found out that there are actually a lot of other ideal ratios for the male body. So I plugged all of these into an Excel spreadsheet and I used my left wrist measurement as a baseline. You use your non-dominant, in my case, left wrist as the baseline for this because that measurement does not change regardless of your age, your weight, your muscle mass, etc. So here is what I calculated using these ideal ratios and my seven inch wrist circumference. A 45.5 inch chest, 32.5 inch waist, 52.6 inch shoulders, and 17.5 inch biceps and calves. Now, here are my measurements from the end of June this year. By doing this, you can pretty clearly see what you need to do. For me, it was reduce my waist, and pretty much increase everything else. But by doing this exercise, I now have a very clear target for what I have to aim for. Now, I know this is head in the clouds, pipe dream stuff, right? The perfect body, but you have to set yourself a target. So why not set yourself a crazy one? So how am I going to achieve this? Well, firstly, I'm restricting what I eat. So I eat around 500 calories less than I burn each day. This way I'm consistently losing weight without completely starving myself. So far, I've lost around 10 kilos or 22 pounds over the last six months. And this started off very quickly. I was losing about a kilogram a week and now it's more like a kilogram each month. I've gone down from 23% body fat down to around 15 to 16% body fat. I'm also lifting weights and I've heard that when you're in a calorie deficit, it's very difficult to build strength. You maintain strength or even lose strength when you're cutting. But I think because I'm new to this and I've got newbie gains, I'm actually getting stronger, even though I am in a calorie deficit. I have lost muscle mass for sure, but I am cutting, so that's completely expected. But what is cool is that I'm losing fat a lot faster than I'm losing muscle. So this means that my muscles are showing through a lot more, which is really awesome to see and keeps me going. I think I hit the sweet spot with a 500 calorie deficit. I could have gone for a much higher deficit and lost weight a lot quicker, but I think I probably would have also lost more muscle at the same time. So for me, slow and steady wins the race. 
Now, my weight loss is plateauing right now, so I do need to reassess my plan. I think maybe restricting a little bit more will kickstart my weight loss, or maybe I just need to be more accurate with my calorie measurements. But for sure in the future when I cut, I am gonna start with a smaller deficit. And then that way, if I do start plateauing, I have more room to cut. If you start with a very big deficit and you do plateau, you don't have much room to move because now you're gonna be really, really restricting yourself and you'll be just too hungry to function. So my plan is that once I hit 12% body fat, I will begin to bulk. And I'm looking to do a clean bulk, eating around 200 to 300 calories more than I burn. I'm gonna to continue to work out and continue to implement progressive overload to maximize my muscle growth. And I'll continue doing this until I get to around 15% body fat. And then I will cut again down to 12. So 15 to 12, 15 to 12. And I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but getting to 15% body fat has taken so long that mentally I never want to be above 15% again. So this is my plan right now. Maybe it will change, but we'll see. So yeah, my body self-improvement goal, work out and continue to bulk and cut until I reach 12% body fat and golden ratio proportions. As well as this, I'm also attempting to naturally increase my testosterone through proper sleep, weightlifting, nutrition, supplementing. And I released a separate video on this a couple of weeks ago. The link is in the description below. And I'll be releasing a one month update video in a couple of weeks time when I get my next blood test result. The next area I'm focusing on as part of my self-improvement journey is my mind. Now, this is an important one for me and one that I'm most concerned about. Currently, I'm suffering from social anxiety, um, especially when I'm in a space with lots of people. I freeze up, my body stiffens, I get in my head, I can't think of what to say, which is really unlike me. I'm not like that normally. And for some reason, it does seem to be getting worse as well. I don't know if that's because I'm now thinking about it more and that exaggerates the problem, but this is something I really have to fix. And what's really strange is that this doesn't happen at work at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I have no problems with meetings, video calls, meeting customers or suppliers. There's no problem. So this is not affecting my work at all, but outside of work, it is. And that's really strange to me. I mean, Maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you've seen something similar, have some advice for me. Now, I've read about gratitude journaling and positive affirmations, so I have practiced these, but I really feel like these are just patches or bandages for the problem and not actually solving the problem. Because although they make you feel good, as soon as I'm back in a, in a room with lots and lots of people, all of this stuff just leaves my head and I'm back to square one again. So I think to fix this, I really need to rework everything from the ground up. My plan to do this comes from a podcast I heard by Modern Wisdom. If you haven't heard any of the Modern Wisdom podcasts, I thoroughly recommend them. Basically, the host, Chris, talks about social anxiety or self-confidence and talks about how it's setting yourself promises and keeping promises to yourself. He uses the example of setting an alarm in the morning. You set an alarm for 6 a.m. to get up early and to start work. Don't hit the snooze button. Keep that promise to yourself. And over time, as you keep these promises to yourself, you'll begin to trust yourself. And then that is what builds that self-confidence. So this is what I'm going to be trying. And I'm going to be setting myself goals, making promises to myself, sticking to these promises part of the reason for making this video, right? I'm getting all of my goals out there so I have accountability so that I have to follow through and achieve these goals. If you have any advice on this, maybe you've overcome social anxiety yourself and you have some tips for me, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. As well as overcoming anxiety, I am focusing on my focus. So I've destroyed my video game addiction. I'm no longer spending hours a day playing those. I've discovered stoicism, which has been really useful. Basically, I'm focusing on what I can control 
and not worrying about what I can't control. And this has been really, really useful. So if you're feeling stuck and you're not sure where to be putting your time and energy, I really recommend you investigate stoicism. Also, waking up early has really increased my productivity. So right now I'm waking up at 5 a.m. each morning so that I can start work at 5.30. That way I can power through all these tasks before I get distractions, before other people are even awake. This is something I want to continue doing as I continue on my self-improvement journey because it's just so useful. So that's mind. Next we have money. Now money is an important one, of course. For me, I've just started a new job. So first and foremost, my plan is to work as hard as I can at this job, achieve my goals, perform as well as I can so that I can maximize my earning potential there. I know there are a lot of self-improvement channels out there that talk about quitting your job and starting your own business. But if I'm being honest, I actually enjoy my career. So I want to see how far I can take this. What I am doing, however, is trying to be clever with the money I do earn. So I heard this comment recently that really stuck with me. If you are not doing anything with your money, you are losing your money. It's basically talking about inflation and how the money you have now will be worth less in a few years time, which is especially important right now because inflation is so high. The idea is that if you can do something with your money, if you can make money from your money, you can outrun inflation. For me, I'm saving about 70% of my post-tax income and I'm investing this in either savings accounts with high interest rates. So in the UK, you can get savings accounts right now with about a five to 6% interest rate, or I'm investing my money in stocks. For me, I'm investing in the S&P 500, which is basically a fund that invests in the top 500 companies in the US. So basically you're spreading your investment over a large number of companies, that way reducing your risk. I use Vanguard for my broker just because it's nice and easy to set up and their rates seem quite low, but there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of videos on YouTube that talk about the S&P 500. So if you're interested in that, you can check those out. The last thing I want to talk about on money is purchases. Now, I like to buy things, who doesn't? But I heard something from Brandon Carter recently which really resonated. He talked about only using the money he makes from his assets to buy nice things. For example, if he wants to buy a nice new watch, he doesn't use his income to pay for that. He uses the money he's earned from his assets, like dividends from stocks, or rental from real estate to pay for those luxuries. That way, you're not using your income to pay for cool things. You're using the money you made from the money you invested. I really like this idea and it's something I'm gonna keep in mind. I just need to get the assets first. And lastly, we have knowledge. Knowledge is power. And who doesn't wanna be more powerful, right? Right now, I'm watching a lot more self-improvement YouTube videos than I am reading self-improvement books. And this is something I want to change. I want to be reading a lot more. Recently, I've been reading a book by Patrick Bet David called Your Next Five Moves. And this has been absolutely fascinating. I think I'm probably gonna make a separate video on this about what I learned because it's just been so informative. But once I've finished rereading this book, I want to read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, and I also want to read The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, again, because these just sound so interesting. Of course, YouTube will still be my main place for self-improvement content, but I want to be careful that I don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. It's so easy to watch YouTube video after YouTube video on how you can improve your life and not actually implement any of it. I heard a saying that said before we didn't have enough information. Now we have too much information and not enough implementation. So I wanna make sure that I don't fall victim to this. And there we have it, my complete self-improvement plan for the foreseeable future, focusing in on my body, my mind, my money, and my knowledge.
Each of these areas really deserves its own video, so I'm going to be breaking these down in future videos. I know this video has been a lot longer than my other videos, so if you're still around, I really do hope you got some value from this and maybe even have some new ideas of things you could implement. And as I said earlier, I'd really love to hear from you down in the comments. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll see you in the next video.